over in Luke chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Now, a couple weeks ago, we started to go down this line. Uh, we, were, we were redirected it during that service by the Holy Ghost in a different direction. So, I'm just going to kind of go back and start over. All right. You know, just instead of, instead of trying to, you know, if you, if you remember kind of where we left, where I was going. And uh, pick, we're just going to start over. Uh, well, you know, it's, a, it's called a redo. We can spell R-E-D-U-X if you want to. Hallelujah. We're doing a redo uh, on this where we started because, because we just went in such a different direction. Uh, as a, you, know, so you understand, that I can come up here in the Holy Spirit. I may start at one place. The Holy Spirit wants to go somewhere else. And I'm going to follow him. Right. You know, because when I come up here with, you know, why didn't he tell Somebody said, well, he, you know, uh, he, the Holy Spirit can speak to him before service. That's not how he uses me. That's not, how you, that's not how God uses me. So I'm, you know what? That's, he can, but he, he doesn't. You know? So, that's the way it is. Hallelujah. You may think he, he should, but it's none of your business. If he should, or shouldn't. The Spirit of God does what he wants to do, and we just follow him. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. But we're going we're to talk about the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, in first, in, in laying this out, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the difference between the, the Spirit, witness of the Spirit and the new birth. Now, there's not two Holy Spirits. There's not one Holy Spirit you get when you get born again and another Holy Spirit you get when you get baptized with the Spirit. Same Holy Spirit. Different working or different manifestation, but same Holy Spirit. We don't have, we don't have double Holy Ghost. Yeah. We got one Holy Ghost. Amen? Hallelujah. But let's look here in Luke 13, uh, 15 through 16. Uh, praise God. The Lord Jesus uh, said, he answered and said, thou hypocrite. The, uh, Luke 3, not 13. Bonehead. Luke 3. Now that, that's a great scripture for healing. It doesn't have anything to do with what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hallelujah. Luke 3, 15. It says, and as the people were in expectation, all men mused in the hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. And John answered, saying, Unto you I indeed baptize you with water, but one cometh mightier than I cometh. The latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Well, thank God there was one, there was one coming. Amen? Amen? Now notice John said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. There was a Jewish practice of baptizing water as a symbol of remission of sin, uh, although they were still re required to fulfill the Levitical law and so forth. But he said, there's one that's going to come baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. I want you to make a note of that because John said that Jesus would baptize us with the Holy Ghost. Jesus, everybody say Jesus, Jesus, would baptize us with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, um, let's go ahead and look over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, one, one argument we're going to make and one uh, case we will lay out is that the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the new birth are not the same thing. Many teach that, that when you get born again, you get all the Holy Ghost you're ever going to get. And, you know, and, and that therefore there's not any, any other experience and uh, so forth. And that speaking in tongues is of the devil and, and a lot of different things that people say. Or, or if, they, if they can't argue that, they'll say that all passed away the day the last apostle died. Or the day we got the canonicity of scripture. And there are different arguments that people use. Now, and let's face it, there is nothing in the Bible that talks about everything stopping when the last apostle died. There is no scripture that bears that out. That's just something somebody just pulled out of the air. And people do that. People have doctrines they just pulled right out of the air. Woof! Somebody was teaching recently on the, 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 five, the Benjamin generation, the five different anointings. Because in the Old Covenant, it said that they put five changes of clothes in Benjamin's packet, and they just started teaching there's five different anointings. There's, no, there's nothing to bear it out. I mean, just where did it come from? Just made it up? So God told them. You know, a lot of times people say God told them stuff that God didn't tell them. They just, they just heard something say it. Their brain told them it. How do you know that? Well, I've heard people tell me stuff that God told them that the Bible says God didn't say. Yes. One girl came in one time and her, you know, her parents called because they were all upset. Their daughter, her daughter was, their daughter was flaky. I mean, she, her picture was on the box of, of granola Christian cereal. You know, fruits, nuts, and flakes all packed together in the same box. I mean, that was her picture was on the front. This girl was a loon. I mean, you talked to her, you thought you were talking to Ka from Jungle Book. 
trust in me. Oh, trust in me. I mean, I, and you're, your eyes are spinning, your head. I mean, you're all hypnotized and everything. She went somewhere to some, in another town to a, a Christian concert and came out and the Lord told her to go talk to these guys all night in the car. Four guys and one girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know what the Lord told her. The Lord of the flies. Beelzebub. Didn't, didn't, know, didn't have cell phones, so didn't call her parents. Came in at 7 o'clock the next morning. Parents been up all night worrying. The Lord didn't do that. The Lord says, honor your mother and your father. Amen. She told them she'd be home at a certain time. The Bible says, swear to your own hurt and change not. God's not going to tell her to go sit in some car with four guys all night long, to abstain from the very appearance of evil. No, dis dishonor your parents, worry your parents, and then come home and say, God told me. Yeah. There you go. That's an example of God. people saying God told them stuff that God didn't say doodly squat about. Anyway, people just make stuff up. So, what does the Bible say about things? Amen? Well, you know, John the Baptist said what? Jesus was going to do what? Baptize. With what? The Holy, Ghost. the Holy Ghost. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Um, I mean, first tw chapter 12, verse 13. And it says something very interesting here. It says, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. That's what? That's the new birth. Yeah. Now here, 1 Corinthians says that the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body. Yet John the Baptist said that Jesus was going to baptize us with the Holy Ghost. They're not the same thing. Can't be the same thing. Right. You, got, you got different agents or different ones doing the work. What John the Baptist referred to was the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus baptizes us into the Holy Spirit. And here the Bible, 1 Corinthians tells us that the Spirit baptizes us into the body. There's two different actions. <laughs> I said, that's two different actions. Why? Because one's the new birth, one's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Look, if you will, over in, um, um, hey, I, I, want, I want to run ahead so fast. Okay, that's just, that's just a little meat to throw out there to get you started. Now, Jesus talking about, let's go back over to John 14. We'll run back over here now. This, I'll make that case stronger later. I just wanted to kind of just t uh, let you know this out there. Just whet your appetite. At least get the, uh, the HG40 working on those brain gears. That's the Holy Ghost version of WD40. <laughs> HG40. Get, you know, getting, the, getting, the, getting in those brain, old rusty brain gears where they been, hadn't been working for a while. And, you know, and, and spray them on all the cogs and everything. You know, how many of you have ever taken WD40 spray and let it sit for a little while and it'll, it'll start loosening that stuff up? I mean, you could, I've, I've done stuff, you put everything on. I've, I've broken tools trying to undo some bolts before. Yeah. You know, and get enough WD-40 on it, let it sit there for a while and penetrate and get in there. And then all of a sudden, ee, 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 ee. hallelujah. That's how some of them brain, are, this brain cells are working right now. I hear them. <laughs> hallelujah. Got all rusty and set in your ways. No, stay teachable. Stay open to the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Let them, let them take you into new places, hallelujah, and that have already been there, but for you, they're new. There's, there's, there's no new teaching. It's just it's new to you because you hadn't heard it before. Or you, you've been so rusty you couldn't receive it. So we're putting some HG40 in there. Now, I'm, now see, I just did that with those two verse scriptures. That's just going to sit while we go somewhere else. All right. John 14, verse 16. Jesus talking about the Holy Ghost. He says, and I'll pray the Father and he'll give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Now two words here are very important. One is another which comes from the Greek um, alos or altos I can't tell, my, I can't read my own writing here uh, another of the same kind so another after, in other words the Holy Spirit was going to act and do things like Jesus did yeah. So that tells me, well, there's a couple things we can, we can see into that. One is he's going to minister and love and care for us the way that Jesus did. Secondly, he's going to do just like Jesus did. That means the dispensation of the Holy Ghost was going to be a continuation and a furtherance of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ the way Jesus ministered. Amen. He wasn't going to change. It's amazing how many people believe that, you know, throughout the Old Covenant and throughout the ministry of Jesus, the healing signs, wonders, miracles were the will of God. But as soon as we got the Bible, that all stops. God now makes people sick. God's putting stuff all over people. God's cursing people. All the best. Now, we, now that we're under a whole different dispensation, you know, but the, he says another after the same manner as myself. That's what that Greek word means. Another after the same manner as myself. 
Not going to change. We know we, uh, um, Hebrews 13.8 has a very interesting statement to make. Y'all know what it says? Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He didn't change. God says, I am the Lord, I change not. Well, we just, we, we sang that song this morning, Jehovah, Jireh, Jehovah, Nisi. There's, there's, uh, there's seven different uh, compound covenant names. Jehovah Rapha, you know, uh, the, and actually Jehovah Rapha is the very first compound covenant name with the word Jehovah in it, given in the Bible, and it means the Lord thy physician, the Lord thy healer. I said the Lord thy physician, the Lord thy healer. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus said, I only do those things as I see my Father do. And the Bible says he went round about their villages teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Right, right. Acts 10.38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen. God hadn't changed, Jesus hadn't changed, and the Holy Ghost hadn't changed. Amen. Amen. So we have another after the same manner as Jesus. Hallelujah. Except the Holy Spirit's not limited to one physical body. He, he's a, he can expand into anyone who receives him, receives the new birth, praise God, and, and then receives the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. He can work through any, any human on the planet who allows him to work through him. So where Jesus was limited while he was in his earthly ministry to one location and one physical body, it's now expanded to the entire body of Christ, every believer, praise God. Hallelujah. Then we look over Mark's gospel. It says, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Amen. They shall cast out devils. Woo! Devils will be coming out talking to you. You know, my wife works with someone. They, their husband went to a theological cemetery. I mean, cemetery, excuse me. And um, when they got there, the first thing they told them was, there's no such thing as a devil. Bless their hearts. Jesus did not know that the devil that was talking to him didn't exist. Remember the devil uh, uh, talked to him and yeah. tested him in the 40 days yeah. and three, ma three major te temptations? Satan talked to him three different times. Adam and Eve didn't know that serpent wasn't the devil. Yeah. Hello? Y'all hear you going, the whole church in the book of Revelation doesn't know that the one we look at and say, is this he who calls the nations to tremble? Didn't know that's really not a, that's really not a devil there. Yeah. As he's thrown into the pit. The prophet, I mean John, by prophecy, by the Spirit of God, did not know that the devil was released at the end of the thousand year millennial, the millennial reign of Christ, thousand year reign of Christ, was really a real devil. We didn't know that. But those theological cemetery guys, I mean seminary guys, know that that's not a real devil. Thank God they showed up on the scene to help us out. Man, we were gone our whole life believing there's a real devil. No, the Bible's so. Amen? Yeah. That one preacher said about those guys with PhDs, he finally figured out it meant post hole digger. Because a common post hole digger with a fifth grade education knows better than that. <laughs> Amen. Now, we're not mocking education. We're just mocking education where you're educated beyond your intelligence. Anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll not, I'm going to get back to this Bible verse here. It says, I'll leave you another same manner as myself, comforter. The word, the word comforter comes from the Greek parakletos. Parakletos, uh, which is a form of the word paraclete. You know, there's, you know, there's got, you understand Greek words, just like English words, have, have voices or tenses and different, they, it changes the word. I mean, it's just like, um, oh, mercy and mercies. You get plural, it changes the word. Well, the same thing happens in the Greek. So parakletos is a form of the word paraclete. But the parakletos, now we found out that word means more, and, and, and see, when you do a word for word translation in the Bible, oftentimes we leave something out. And here's one of those cases where we left something out. The word parakletos means more than, it does mean comforter. But it also means advocate, helper, strengthener, standby, intercessor, and teacher, and comforter. So seven different meanings to that word. So the translators had to choose one. Yeah. So they chose comforter. Well, that's accurate, except it leaves out all the other six aspects of what that word meant. So Jesus said, I'm going to leave you another intercessor. I'm going to leave you another teacher. I'm going to leave you another helper. I'm going to leave you another standby. I'm going to leave you another advocate. Amen. I'm going to leave you another comforter. And I left one out, but I don't know which one it was, so we'll just, hallelujah. Amen. It's in there somewhere. We said it. We said it. All right. When he said that, they heard all those things. They didn't just hear comforter. They heard the whole embodiment of what that word meant. Amen. 
So Jesus said, because remember talking about, he said, I'll not leave you comfortless. He said, you know, they're, they're kind of uptight. They're upset because they're about to lose Jesus. He's been talking to them. They sent something's up. He's talking about, you know, tearing down this temple and rebuilding it in three days. They're kind of getting uptight. Things are going on. But he said, I'm not going to leave you without a comfort. I'll send another helper, strengthener, advocate, intercessor, teacher, standby, comforter, advocate. All those things, they're coming for you. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank God. Yeah, here we go. Comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, standby. That he may abide with you forever. Amen? Glory to God. So, yeah, um, it's allos, another of the same sort, not heteros, which means different. He didn't say one said a different. He said, I'm going to send another just like me. Well, why is he just like him? Well, he's, the Holy Spirit's the third person of the Godhead. He has the same characteristics, the same nature as the Father and the Son. Because he, he, is, he is divine. He is deity. <coughs> Amen. His operation is different. In other words, you know, the Spirit of God didn't come in flesh and take our sin, but he's still God. The Holy Spirit is not an it. Well, Romans says that the Spirit itself bears... Uh, no, no, no. You're, you're, you're letting a, gr a Greek grammatical rule of translation alter what the Word of God teaches. The Holy Spirit's a person. You can grieve the Holy Spirit. You can't grieve an it. Are you here? I said, are you here? Yeah. It can't comfort you. Holy Spirit can. Yes. Amen. Y'all hear? The Holy Spirit searches the heart of God. It can't search. Amen. The Holy Spirit searches. Now, I don't have time to go into the whole, all the, you know, the, the, just the fact that he doesn't have a human, human body. Well, the Father doesn't have a human body. Only the Son took on flesh. Yes. Amen. I said, Amen. amen. But the Holy Spirit is still a person, has personality. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. John 14, 26. Jesus said, but the paracletos, that is the comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you. Now, it's don't teach. Amen. He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatever, whatsoever I said unto you. Now some bozo recently said in some teaching somewhere and it's kind of gotten around that you know everything up uh, uh, up to the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, 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 from, from, the, from the beginning of the church back. Everything from the beginning of the church back meaning er, including the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ is irrelevant to the church today. Well, it's because they're teaching on grace and they're teaching right this extreme, these extreme teachings. And so nothing anybody else says, because a lot of things Jesus said put requirements on us. A lot of things in the old covenant put requirements on us. So they just want to do away with all that. There's no, there's no, there's no restrictions or requirements on us because we're under grace. Isn't it funny that the Holy Spirit's going to bring to our remembrance whatever Jesus said to, you know, things that, that aren't relevant because he, you know, it's not relevant. But he's going to bring it to our remembrance. Why would he bring to our remembrance things that aren't relevant? It's because dodo brains are just doing dodo stuff. It's re it is relevant. Amen. And, uh, you know, I just, we trust that their that they're thinking will be just like go the way of the dodo birds. Become extinct. Not them, but their thinking will become extinct. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit's going to teach us and, and cause us to remember the things Jesus said. John 15, 26. But when the Comforter, Counselor, Helper, Intercessor, Advocate, Strengthener, and Standby has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he will testify of me. It's don't testify. Now, the Holy Spirit is a divine person, a divine personality. John 16, 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, Counselor, Helper, Intercessor, Advocate, Strengthener, and Standby will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Praise the Lord. And so we see here from these scriptures that Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as a person. He says he's going to do certain things for us. He's going to teach us. He's going to remind us. He's going to strengthen us. Amen. He'll be our comforter, strengthener, counselor, helper, advocate, strengthener, so forth and so on. He'll be all those things to us. Glory to God. Are you here? You're going home. So Jesus is talking about another personality, another divine personality coming into the earth to fulfill or to carry forth. Remember um, Acts chapter 1. Real interesting statement here. Acts 
Acts 1.1. Luke writing, he, you know, the, uh, he's the author of, of Acts and he's the author of Luke. The former trees have I written to the old Theophilus of all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after the, that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, chosen. The ministry of Jesus was the beginning, it wasn't the end. The church is to carry out and walk in the same manner that Jesus did. You remember Jesus said this, now I have this in my notes, so you're going to have to look it up. Jesus said, the works that I do shall ye do also and greater than these, because I go unto the Father. Yeah. See, the church should be ministering like Jesus. Yeah. Now that's going to upset some folks, because they, they don't believe in healing in their church. They don't believe in the power in their church. They don't believe in miracles in their churches. They believe in the sovereignty of God. You know, everything is the case, Sarah, Sarah song. Their worship services are case, Sarah, Sarah. Whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see, case, Sarah, Sarah. I mean, they just have a good time worshiping. Case, Sarah, Sarah. Whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see. Que sera, sera. Doris Day leading worship in the Holy Ghost Church. All right. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You know? I mean, what kind, of, what kind of thinking does the church have that we just get to the point that whatever happens, happens, and yet the, Jesus said the works that he did shall we do and greater. Then these shall we do because I go into the Father. Then you've got people who come along and say, well, the greater works are we get people saved. We get people saved. And that's all, and they, say, and that's all they measure on. In other words, they, they, but he didn't say that you'll do, greater, you'll do a greater work than I did. He said the works that I do. Where is it? Pop it up. Yeah, just pop it up there for me. Are you having problems still? All right. John 14, 12. Let's look over there in your Bible. Good. You can mark it down in there anyway. Look here. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the first century apostles who were with me in and out of ministry and saw me every day, the works that I do shall they do and greater because I go unto the Father. We do. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Verily, I verily, I say unto you, that when we, until the day that we get the Canonasia scripture, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall they do, and greater than these shall I do, because I go unto my Father. How many of y'all reading King James? No. How many reading NIV? Well, that's your problem. Anyway. <laughs> I, I'm personally not a fan of the NIV. I think it's, I think it's too many discrepancies in it. They use the, the minority text instead of the majority text to translate it from and there's just things that, that change doctrinal positions of the church in my personal view. Um, I, I, and I'm not a fan of all the King James language but I, we can cut through that with getting into the Greek and stuff. But um, how many are using a 1611 KJV? <laughs> are you using a 1611 KJV? I'm not sure. Uh. <laughs> Let's, let's, see. let's take the glasses off. Oh, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Who, who believes on Jesus? Yeah, right here. What qualifier is in this verse? Believe in Jesus. He that believeth on me. Yeah. No other qualifier. There's no other, there is no other parameter. There is no other limitation. There is no other time frame. There is nothing else in this verse other than he that believeth on me. So what's that do? It perpetuates that throughout the history of the church. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Let's forget the greater work for a second. We're supposed to be doing the works Jesus did. I said we're supposed to be doing the works that Jesus did. Yeah. Well, what did Jesus do? I've read the, the, the Gospels numerous times, mm -hmm. and I still haven't found Jesus walking up to some guy who had his eyesight. Hello. Go ahead. Just minding his own business. Yeah, go ahead. Walking up to him and saying, be blind. 
And uh, the guy going, well, why, what, what, why, Lord? Until you learn the thing I'm trying to teach you. Okay, Lord, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll suffer with this until I figure out what you're trying to teach me. By the way, Lord, what is it you're trying to teach me? You'll figure it out. <laughs> How about this one? The Lord walking up to somebody. The family's walking down the street, minding their own business, and he just brings a chariot by and runs over their baby. Walks up to them and says, I'm teaching you a lesson, and walks off. And oh, yes, Lord, we understand you're trying to teach it. I can't find that anywhere in the Bible. Nowhere in the, the epistles, I mean, not epistles, but in the Gospels, can I find him doing any of that? Uh -huh. Why can't I find that? Yeah. Well, one thing is, Jesus says this in John's Gospel. He says, I only do those things which I see my Father do. Yes. Wow. So now Jesus says, I am a representation. Yeah. I am going to get to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I am a representation. Maybe next week, but I'm going to get to it. <laughs> I, my life, my ministry is a representation of of the will of the Father. Hebrews 1 says this, that Jesus was the express image of his personage. Jesus took on human flesh and came and represented the will of the Father. Now, I don't see him killing anybody, but I see him raising the dead. Uh -oh. I don't see him making anybody sick, but I see him healing the sick. Uh -huh. I don't see him throwing people to the dogs, but I see him ministering life. Oh, yeah. So then I have to say, now, Mr. Ph.D., Mr. M.A., B.A., Ph.D., T.H.D., E.D.D., whatever else you got. Are you here? You're going home. I don't you know how many years of higher learning you got. What I do know is your opinions don't mean doodly squat. When I look into the Bible, when I see Jesus, you come up and tell me that all passed away the day the last apostle died. Or now that we're in the new covenant, God makes people sick. God kills your, your loved ones. God puts stuff on people to teach us some kind of lesson. We're supposed to try to figure out what it is. Yeah, I've seen people die saying that God's trying to teach me something and they never figured out what it was. That's a shame. Yeah. Go ahead. It's good. Yeah. That's a shame. When Jesus said, I am, the, I am the representation of the will of the Father. I, he, said, he said this, I only do those things which I see my Father do. Now, how's this going to work with the Holy Spirit? Just hang on to your seat for a few minutes. I mean, if you had to, strap yourself down and just, just go for the ride for a minute. I only do those things which I see my Father do. Then he comes along and says, and the works you've seen me do, you're going to do. Now we got people arguing to be sick. Arguing that God doesn't heal. Saying people who lay hands on the sick are of the devil. Now in Acts 10 38, when Jesus ministered to the sick, it was God's anointing, and the people that were oppressed were oppressed of the devil. And Luke's, well, I think it's Luke's gospel, the woman who had the issue of blood, not the issue of blood, but was bowed over with an infirmity eight, uh, 15 years, 18 years. Jesus said, Ought not this woman whom Satan hath bound low these 18 years be loose from her infirmity on the Sabbath day? So who was, who was doing the oppressing? The devil. Who was doing the healing? God. Yeah. Jesus. God. Amen. Amen. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. So why is it now that Jesus has gone to heaven to sit at the right hand to intercede for us, giving the church the commandment to do the works that he did and greater than what he did? Now all of a sudden he's laying hands on the sick ear of the devil and that God put that on him to teach him a lesson. Why, why, what happened? I can tell you what happened. Idiots. <laughs> the unlearned. Those who listen to the devil. Those who had no power were impotent in the things of God and thus they must make up an excuse as to why they're impotent in the things of God and so they blame it off on God as to why it's that way. Amen. When the truth of the matter is they didn't take the time to get before God and get into the presence of God and get filled up with the Holy Ghost to overflowing and get in with power from on high glory to God after the Holy Ghost came on them and go out and do the works of Jesus and the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your enthusiasm. 
It has nothing to do with God. It's men had to make up an excuse as to why they had no power. Uh -huh. yeah, right. And then they taught the people that. So now people sit around and blame God as to why they're going through what they're going through. Y'all can just get a little more enthusiastic. <laughs> it, would, it would, you know, just it would be appreciated. Okay. I mean, a couple of hankies wouldn't hurt. You know, just go on. Yeah, preach, pastor. Yeah, all right, yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. So back here in John 14, Jesus said, in verse 12. Um, well, let's back, we better back up. Verse 9, 8. <laughs> right, let's start in Genesis 1-1. One, one. All right, praise the Lord. <laughs> Philip saith unto the Lord, Lord, show us the Father, and it, it, it suffices or is sufficient for us. And Jesus said, Have I been with you so long, that you have, and you, yet you have not known me? He that has seen me has seen the Father. Amen. You want to know what the Father's like? Read the Gospels. Amen. Yeah, right. See what Jesus did for people. Yeah. That's the, that's the Father. Yeah. If you want to know what the Father thinks, see what Jesus did. Because yeah. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And how sayest then show us the Father? Believe thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. <clears throat> but the Father in me, uh, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. In other words, think about this now, stop. <clears throat> the things that Jesus were doing, in healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils, delivering the oppressed, causing miracles to take place in people's lives, were all, all, a manifestation of the will and love of the Father toward humanity. Verse 12. Verily, verily. Now, verily, verily is, is King Jimmy. Or King James. But King Jimmy. For basically, I swear. It's a solemn oath. To say verily, verily was to give a solemn oath. In other words, it, Jesus used it to present that what I'm about to say is, is, is not just, I'm just not talking flippantly, I'm not talking lightly. I am telling you in a solemn oath. So, uh, in, in a solemn oath, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, that not, listen, no other qualifiers, no limitations, no stupid, dumb the day they got the canonicity of the scriptures or the day the last apostle died garbage that somebody made up. Mm -hmm. Neither of those terms are used in the Bible. But they're in church doctrines. They're preached from pulpits all the time. Hello. Now the qualifier is he that believeth. In other words, if you're a Christian, if you're born again, he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. Now, these people who say that everything up uh, to the beginning of the epistles is, is irrelevant and no longer needed, how are you going to find out how to do what Jesus did without reading and seeing what Jesus did? Uh -oh. You got to go back and see what he did to know what you're supposed to do. I believe in the love of God, but some people get kind of weird. All we need to do is love one another. That's not what the Bible says. Now, love's important. Love, love is a part of the whole, but it's not the whole. Hello? Love you be, be your motivation, but it's not the whole of everything. We just love one another. I mean, getting together and doing Barney songs as a church is not how you get anything done. I love you. I didn't wear my purple shirt. I should have worn my purple shirt this morning. I didn't know I was going to see Barney. If I knew I was going to do that, I would have bought my purple shirt. I love you. You love me. We're a happy family with a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. Too much of that going on. I want you to say you love me too. Isn't that right, baby bop? Too much kissing going on in the church. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it on, preacher. 
I mean, there are people watching this on the internet this week, just fell out of their seats. Oh my God, he's talking to me. Yes, I am. You kissing on somebody they ain't supposed to be kissing on, you better stop kissing on them. Anyway. Talking to you. All right. Amen. And we need to have a little Barney cartoon that comes up here when I sing the Barney song. We get weird with that kind of stuff. Yes, the, the love of God should constrain us. The love of God should be our motivation. But I'm going to tell you, you know, we're supposed to go do stuff. Motivated by love, but just say we just love one another. We just sit around and, I mean, we do the Coca-Cola song. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. There was hippies on, on drugs. I mean, everybody, what, we, the, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. A bunch of dopies wrote those songs. Don't you remember? A bunch of hippies smoking dope and shooting up and getting high. And we think that's, 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 that moves us. It moves the emotion, but it's not a spiritual thing. The love of God's in the spirit of man, not in your soul. It's in your pneuma, not in your suke. Amen. And it needs to stay out of your soma. <laughs> Flesh. <laughs> yeah, you got all right. We're at Grace with us. We can move ahead. <laughs> <laughs> He's got our leap lab. All right. How could I? My, 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 my. But he said this. He said, The works that I do shall ye do also. And greater than these because I go unto my Father. Or greater, greater because I go unto my Father. Now, we've had, we've had a lot of argument over whether the greater was more in numerical or, or greater in, in quality. Now the only thing, well, and really if you, if, you kinda, if you look at it this way, um, this, this, is irre- this is a true statement because people say, well we get people saved and Jesus didn't. But Jesus appeared unto the disciples and breathed on them and said, receive you the Holy Ghost. Oh. So if they were born again at that point, then he got people saved. Yeah. Yeah. In his earthly ministry while he was still on the earth. So greater would have to be in quant- quality, or not quality, quantity, because we're not limited to one place by a physical body. The body of Christ is all over the earth. Yeah. Yeah. And everything Jesus did in Jerusalem, Samaria, and Judea, and that, that region of the world can be done in Greensboro, North Carolina, and High Point, North Carolina, and can be done in, in Connecticut, and uh, in north of the Mason, God loves people from north of the Mason, for all of our southerners, God does love people north of the Mason, Dixon line. <laughs> I know you have, refer, when, when Southerners have re- references to their name and so forth, but God loves those people. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I think. Anyway, I'm messing, I'm messing. <laughs> we got some Yanks in here today, I'm just messing on them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, amen. Aren't you glad God loves you too? Amen. Yeah. For this purpose, it was the Son of God manifest to help the Yanks. All right. That's not a scripture. I thought I just made that one up. <laughs> But Jesus, and see, I used to believe that the church started on the day of Pentecost, but I've been corrected, so I'm, I'm now Brother Bill's been praying for me for years, and <laughs> we used to, used to say we disagree, now we agree. Yeah, no, some odd years, hallelujah. Jesus got people saved because he took his disciples, he breathed on them and said, receive you the Holy Ghost. They were saved. Right. Well, he was raised from the dead. Didn't really, not really hard to believe on him when he's raised from the dead, standing there talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, don't have a, you don't have to really exercise too much faith in that, really. Just, he's, he's raised from the dead. The Bible says if you, if you believe that God is raised from the dead, confess with your mouth that he's Lord. They, 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 they confess him as Lord. He's standing right there talking to him. I mean, okay, you're raised from the dead. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> now, Thomas didn't believe it, and he got rebuked for it later. All right. So, Jesus got people saved. Then what can be the greater? The greater would have to refer to how much work, how many works. Now, this is very interesting because when John closed his, his, his gospel, in the closing chapter of his gospel, he says this. All, you know, that he only wrote certain things down. That if everything Jesus did was written down, he supposed that the world itself could not contain the volumes of the books thereof. So, what's that mean? The church needs to get busy. Yeah. We need to stop being a weenie church. Uh, amen. 
You know what a weenie church is? We just have to put up whatever God puts on us. Oh, I just don't know why God's doing this to me. I just can't understand why I've got this and I've got that and, and why age and why all this. You better stop being a weenie. You better get to, the, get, back, get to living by faith, taking your stand, using the authority of the believer, and then saying, no, let's see, I, I didn't get to it. We're going to run out of time. Being full of the Holy Ghost so you can minister the life to other people. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, the new birth is for you, and there's aspects of the baptism of the Holy Spirit that's for you, to, to, to build you up and to charge you up, but the building and the charging of it so you can go share that with other people and minister life to them. Jesus told the disciples, he said, but tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Judah, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. <laughs> Now listen, if he breathed on them, they were, filled, they were born again. When he breathed on them, he said, receive you the Holy Ghost. And then still told them to go wait until they be endued with power after the Holy Ghost comes on them. He's talking about something different, isn't he? Right. And that's where we're going to leave you at for next week. Good, 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 good. We're going to re-redo. We're going to re-re-redo. No, this was just an expanded, this was an expanded opening. All right. This was the prelude to the redo. Aren't you glad you can come to church here? Amen. Amen. So, next week, we're going to begin to talk about how we can do the works that Jesus did. And we'll begin in Luke chapter 4. Remember Jesus, and if you read, go ahead and read Luke chapter 4 this week, this week and study it some. But notice two key things. When Jesus went into the, spirit, the wilderness, the Bible says Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. Right. Being tempted 40 days of the devil. And when he comes out, the Bible says, and he, he returned to Jerusalem in the power oh, yeah. of the Spirit. He went in full, he came out in the power. Amen. That's where we're going to start. All right. Then we're going to move into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Somebody say double shun die. Hallelujah. <laughs>